Day six. Brother killed day one, so that's pretty cool. So took a day off, at least a morning hunt, so he can get his stuff taken care of. Uh, I had to take a day off, go home, do some concrete, um, back in it. You know, it's pretty nice because uh, all the all the weekend campers are out of here, so finally you know we can move around and we're not listening to music and side by sides and shots going off at six o'clock in the morning and chaos um problem is it's still warm today there's supposed to be like a pressure system coming in so i'm hoping it's going to cool it off but these guys were ripping thursday night just screaming since then uh, it's just been nothing so this morning we got on a six by six in the dark, try to stalk on him. Uh, it turns out he was on the other side of the canyon. So we ripped around, got on the other side, got eyes on him. Decent, decent six by six. Of course, what did we do? We pushed him back to the side we were on before. So now we're back over here um, and trying to figure that out. Um, I don't know, it's like 9.30. I think he went, he might have bedded down. Oh, that's pretty cool. All along back here, if you can kind of see the water, it's a, a lake back there. And uh, all along this ridge line behind me is just bed after bed after bed, so it's pretty cool. But I don't know, we're, we're having conversations. I'm not sure if the route's really going just yet. I mean, it started, but I don't know. It's just not certainly not what we've hoped so anyways we'll update so we'll see what happens uh, nah.
show. Dude. Stop. There. Both of them. Don't. Don't, don't call. Both of the cat balls are on the inside there. The big one turned and ran when that other one challenged him. Turned and ran. The other one came across on the right and charged into the freaking trees after him. Dude, that was awesome. Hear him? He is running. No. No. One one cow came down. One cow came down. Yes, there's another one.
Okay, I took that shot. Not comfortable. That's way off, dude. All right, I took the shot. My range was off. He was moving. Same problem I've had in the past. I should have mewed. I should have done something, yeah. but got him to stop. So, but so it's my you. only, um, it was my only opportunity that I've had. And it's like, what, day 10? 10. 10. It's exactly what happened to me last time on day 10. So, but we can't find my arrow. And so we're looking, looking, because I'm like, I hate the worst thing that I don't like is hurting and damaging an animal. But we're searching and I got blood here and here. Uh, I got some more blood. Looks like here. So looks like I did hit him. I, I was not confident with that shot, which because of the range. The range was off. Um, I had it the trees at 30, so I put my 40 pin because I knew he was behind him. And ranging, it looks like he might have been more like 55. So I was pretty confident it went underneath him. Although the video shows a knock, a pretty definite knock hit. Just worried I hit him with a bad shot. And that just that really upsets me. I don't like injuring animals. So, um, so we're on the hunt. Oh. Well, as you can see, uh, pretty frustrated at that point. Uh, you know, I, the worst thing is, is, is injuring an animal and I don't want to injure an animal. I, I, if I'm going to make the shot, I want it to be a good shot. I thought it was at the time. Um, but again, I've made this mistake in the past. I've shot an animal moving. Uh, I've talked to buddies about this, throwing out a little mew, something, some noise to get them to at least stop. Hey, take a look at you and let it go. Uh, you know what? It's as much as what was going on at the time, the excitement, the rush, I didn't do it. I took the shot. Uh, so I was pretty disappointed in myself uh, that I did that. This is now my second time doing that. I was successful the first time and I recovered my animal, but it took me a while. So we, so th that was first mistake on my part. Um, then comes second mistake. How quick do you push the track? We talked about this in part one. <laughs> Yeah, we made that mistake. I pushed too quick. Uh, we started to track on him pretty quick. We had a decent amount of blood. It was making me feel a little bit better. Okay, maybe my shot was a lot better than I thought. We were able to keep kind of following his track. Uh, we got probably about 150, 200 yards away uh, from there, and I ended up bumping him up out of his bed. This is why a lot of times we talk about it. It's like, hey, if you don't happy with that shot, you're not really sure. You know what? Let's let's sit down. Let's have lunch. Let's just take a break. Let's give it an hour, two hours, three hours, whatever we think is is appropriate, and then start a track. They'll go bed, and they're gonna if it's a decent kill shot, they'll they'll die. Uh, give it time. Uh, the worry is you you bump them up out of that bed, and now you probably eliminated any track possible because they've laid down and they've, they've clogged up that wound uh, just inadvertently by laying on the ground. So as soon as we, as soon as we bumped him, uh, I couldn't see where my arrow was on him, if my arrow was still in him or not. I couldn't see blood on either side of him. I wasn't really sure. He was kind of running away from us. And I say running, he, he was jogging up the hill. Um, you know, he was, we obviously scared him. And so at that point it was like, all right, stop making the mistakes. We're gonna hit the hit the pause button. We GPSed it. We got we got got our ourselves hiked out of there. And I said, you know what, we're gonna just go grab more help. So we immediately ran, started making phone calls, grabbed the rest of the family, said, hey, we need to get back out there. I need more more boots on the ground to help us track, because I knew this was gonna be difficult. So it, it took us a little bit, a few hours later, we get back out there, we start a track, we start what I think is the most obvious spot is where we last saw him, but guess what? Not seeing any blood, we're not finding his tracks, we're not finding any evidence of him. So at that point, it's trying to decide, you know, where would this elk go? 
injured, okay, he's probably going to take path of least resistance downhill. We start there. Can't find any, can't find him, can't find any tracks, um, can't find any blood. So then we kind of started branching out different directions, at least in the general direction he took off. Um, we ended up getting lucky. Uh, but when we find him, I'm a little worried because now it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon when I found him. I shot him at 8. We probably bumped him about 9.30ish. So he's been out there for a few hours. Uh, it's the rut hunt. It's September. It's a little bit warmer out. Um, I'm worried about meat spoilage now. Uh, very, very excited. Uh, you guys, I'll show you the video when we found him. Uh, I'm embarrassed to to show you my shot. It's a hor I, I'm not happy with it. It did the job. It killed him. Uh, but uh, man, I've uh, it, it's rough. Um, talking with the butcher about that shot. Um, there's actually like a pinky sized artery that runs under the rear spine and it feeds the back uh, rear end of that animal. And my shot is right above the hindquarters, right underneath that spine. Looks like that's what I clipped. It was like clipped that artery back there and ended up bleeding him out. Now I wish it would have bled him out a little bit quicker uh, because what he probably did was uh, he went in bed and I think that arrow probably, uh, which was still in him at the time, probably plugged up uh, that wound a little bit. So me actually, me bumping him probably did actually help uh, in in hope, and him dying sooner uh, because it looks like he, he looks like from where we last saw him to where we found him really was only another maybe hundred yards away and it looked like he just pff, fell right over from where he was walking. So um, so bumping him probably actually helped uh, ensure that it went faster. Still. Uh, it's not the scenario that I would have uh, planned or wanted, I guess. So, anyways, uh, you'll see the video when we uh, we find him. Uh, we were able to gut him out real quick, or as quick as we could, uh, try and cool him off, get him back to camp, get him skinned out, and uh, I'll show you a photo when I got him to the butcher. No meat loss. So happy about that. Uh, ended up with a great bull. So, so happy. I'm very happy we were able to recover it. For those of you guys that have taken shots and lost tracks, man, just my heart goes out to you. Uh, just keep keep pushing. Uh, keep keep trying to find that animal. Uh, I, I just, I, I very feel very passionate about it. If you shot something, um, man, just keep going and keep trying to find that, that animal. Um, you know, just don't want to see that, that waste. So... Uh, and then stay tuned. I'll have uh, part three coming out and it'll it'll be our third bull that uh, we took off this year. Well, we got him. Found him. Horrible shot. <laughs> Horrible shot. Oh, man. Almost spined him in the rear, but... Holy cow. All right. Much bigger than my last, so. Bob. Woo! Got the whole, whole fam out searching. So, all of them out searching. Woohoo, buddy! Six. Six by six. Yeah. He's broke on his uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, broke on his. I think he went well. I don't know. No. That was Bob. Yeah, he's like, I'm just gonna go walk around. I'll find him. Joe, you hey. shot him in the ass again. <laughs> I shot him right in the same spot. It's so bad. Oh my gosh. I gotta stop shooting the animals moving. Oh, How does that work? <laughs> I don't know. Damn, dude. I don't know, but he's we're gonna got some cleaning to do because man he is he's ripe. Alright. 